Welcome to our concert today, Shinkoski Noon Concerts. And thank you for coming out to support our graduate students. We have four graduate students who are having world premieres today, so this music is hot off the press. And I can say, as a composer, we look back on those premieres and we remember everyone in the room, so you're all now their best friend as well, as Max Haft. Um, it's a really exciting moment, is one, what I'm trying to say. And uh, we're really appreciative that Max Haft is here and taking this on and giving so much time and care. Uh, he will also be playing with the orchestra this Saturday night, the Ludoslavsky Violin Concerto, so I hope we'll see you there. And while I'm at it, we have three more concerts. Ready? Tonight, the jazz band is playing in here. Tomorrow uh, afternoon, the percussion ensemble is playing in here. And tomorrow night, the Scuola Cantorum uh, Chamber Choir is singing in here. So please come join us for all of those. We'd be happy to see you. Um, if you do have cell phones and whatnot that make noise, as I mentioned, these composers are on the edge of their seat hearing a premiere, so please do make sure that those are turned off at this time. Um, please take note of the exits. There's one, two, three. In the rare case, there's an emergency. Thank you so much and enjoy.
Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming to this noon concert. It's a true pleasure to be here at UC Davis uh, for this residency. I'm, I'm just so excited to be able to work with these fantastic composers here at UC Davis. So definitely give them a round of applause because they're really very special. So I hope you guys have been having a nice day. Um, <laughs> Adam, what's going on, man? Not much. Okay. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your piece and sort of the, 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 the concept behind it. I mean, for me, I all these little fragments um, with audio visual, and then obviously it was manipulated by electronics. So tell us a little bit about your compositional process and, and, and about the piece. Yeah, um, it can be really hard to construct meaning in music or any art, but there's very little of a shared vocabulary or language or aesthetic consensus. And so it can be kind of scary, but also liberating to work in kind of non-meaning and just kind of construct a set of experiences that exist and maybe they ask questions but those questions probably don't have answers and uh, it's scary to do that because we're kind of taught often to try to create works that teach you how to listen to them, ask answers, resolve them, um, but it's kind of interesting to explore, you know, breaking down of that category itself and just trying to make uh, something that kind of floats and so the design of the sounds and the images were things that float in our so there's almost like a sense of like neutrality to the music in a certain way. It's, at least in these sort of phrases, they're sort of yeah unto themselves. So yeah, to speak. I think there's a linearity to them, but I like to think of them as bumping into each other, sort of, but floating in a little atmosphere together. Wow, like little neutrons, sort of. Yeah. <laughs> in the yeah in the universe. Anyways, thanks so much, Adam. Yeah, thank really you so much. Wonderful, wonderful thanks. piece. Um, I'm going to invite Joseph to speak now. Hi, Joseph. How's it going? Good. So I'm going to play your piece uh, next. Can you tell us a little bit about your piece and the uh, same kind of the concept of it? Like, how to... Of course, yeah. So the next piece uh, is called As Close to Peace as You Can Get. Uh, it's about the sort of back and forth everyday experiences that we have between um, moments where we can relax and calm down for a moment that seem to not last for very, not ever long enough, and these moments of frustration. So it goes back and forth between this very neutral, uh, nice, even sound, uh, just one note by itself that sort of gets intruded on over time and uh, sort of explodes into different uh, emotions. So there's like moments of obviously ups and downs in this piece, pe moments of peace and then moments of sort of fiery intensity, uh, which you'll hear in just a moment. So thanks a lot, Joseph. Of course, thank you.
actually uh, a piece that I brought. Um, it's, a, it's a piece by Jörg Frey, who's a Swiss composer. Uh, Jörg is a sort of makes up part of this uh, particular group of composers in in Europe, primarily in Europe, but also here, uh, called Vondelwieser. And Vondelwieser is sort of a type of minimalism, uh, minimalistic sort of composition, uh, very, very sparsely notated. Um, this next piece is called Distant Colors. Um, it was actually written for Eric Carlson, who's the violinist, uh, violin teacher at uh, UC San Diego. Um, and so Europe wrote it for him, I believe in 2010. In any case, it's, it has a really in interesting sound file that has uh, sort of, it's compiled of a lot of field recordings that Jörg did. Um, he's really, really into sort of like going in out in nature and recording random sounds. And anyway, so they're, you're gonna hear a sound file. And on top of the sound file, there's sort of these sinus tones, like these very, very, very faint sinus tones where uh, part of my, direction in the piece is to sort of mimic the sinus tone, but where I have to perceive it because it's so faint. Anyway, so we'll try to listen for the, some of these like very, very faint sinus tones, and then I'll be playing, but in a very, very, very soft way. So anyways, I hope you enjoy. Thank you. 
I'm going to invite Trey Mockler to the stage. Um, Trey wrote a piece called Three Trinkets. Hey, Trey. Hey, how's it going? Good. Well, tell us about your piece. Uh, I can tell you that they're very virtuosic, so I've got a lot of work ahead, but uh, tell, me, yeah, tell me about the, the process, how you came to, the, to write this piece. Yeah, so um, the process was rooted in panic. Uh, <laughs> I you know, spent the summer moving here from New York City, and so I was not really in a composing mindset, and writing for solo violin is not necessarily the easiest thing in the world, so I had a lot of resistance within myself. Um, so basically what you're going to hear are three miniatures, so they're short movements, and there's, you know, they're compact and in some ways I think kind of delicate. Uh, and so I was imagining, you know, like a knickknack, um, some things which I don't really have any of because I moved here with virtually nothing. Uh, and so with the first movement in particular, though, there was, whenever I first moved into my apartment, my mattress was sitting on my bedroom floor, um, and I guess I had like a cup of water that was sitting in the sink in my kitchen. And the light came in from the window, hit the water, and then reflected onto my bedroom wall. And so there's this sort of dappled, uh, just like light uh, thing. I don't know, that's not a good word for it, but whatever. Um, you know, just, but it was really beautiful. And I was thinking in that moment, like, oh, this could be what I write the piece about. And then I completely forgot about that. Um, and so coming back to the piece, which I remember feeling upset when I finished it, I was like, oh, you know, I could have done better. And I think distance, um, helps and so hearing it and hearing the wonderful work you put into it um, Draws me back to that and I keep thinking about that especially in the first movement um, So then in the second movement, it's sort of uh, is marked drunken and volatile So basically unstable a little bit wobbly heavy-handed, but also at times uh, very tender and sincere And then finally the third movement is very playful tongue-in-cheek uh, at times almost cute and I just want to thank you for all the hard work you put in and the time that you have generously given us. And uh, thank all of you listeners for being here, uh, whether you are knowingly or unknowingly supporting new music. Can't be here, and this can't happen without you. So thank you. Thanks. Please enjoy.
control panic. That's exactly what I uh, have. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Trey. Great piece. Okay, last but not least is Emily Sullivan. Hi, Emily. How are you? I'm, I'm good. good. I'm, I'm, I'm working, but I, I love it. I love working it. Hard. So, <laughs> so tell us a little bit about Pavan. Sure. Where, where's, where's the title from, by the way? How did you sort of come up with that? Great segue. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So my initial conception for this piece was that I wanted to write a set of miniatures based on the drive cross country from Buffalo, um, and so Pavan was just one of many I'd been researching, and I wanted to use those forms and rhythms from the Baroque era to kind of create this fun, jaunty set, and that just wasn't what needed to be created, I guess, because the Pavan rhythm, which is just a very simple da, 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 very steady, slow, um, that was what uh, actually I ended up creating music for, not just ideas, but actual music that wanted to come forth. And so I suppose it became more of an emotional journey for the piece instead of this physical or intellectual one. Yeah, so you can listen for that actual rhythm. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks a lot, Emily. Thank you.
to thank everyone for coming and and like like I think Emily said or someone said, thank you for supporting new music because this is this is the future of instrumental music and we need to grow this. This is so important and it's so fantastic that UC Davis supports this and uh, I'm, I'm just thrilled to be here. And, and be doing all this wonderful, wonderful music. So thank you so much. And one last thing, uh, there's a Mandavi concert of the UC Davis Orchestra on Saturday, as probably many of you know. Uh, Christian Baldini is, is conducting this wonderful UC Davis Orchestra. Um, I'm playing a concerto by uh, Ludus Slavsky, who's a Polish composer. He wrote a piece called Chain Two. Anyways, it's a fantastic piece. I all encourage you to come. Uh, so I'll stop my promo right now, but thank you so much. <laughs>